my name is Kevin. I'm from Baltimore. You may know me as Endless Cemetery from my video game streams and some of the conversations that I have on there on Twitch. Um, I've been a metal fan for about 20 years, and I've been attending and playing shows in the metal scene in Baltimore for about 15 years. Um, my first show was in the year 2005. It was a uh, Soulfly show. Um, I was straight edge at the time, so I was excited to see the band Throwdown that also played. But my second show after that, immediately after that, was actually Maryland Death Fest. And um, that was actually the reason I wanted to make this video. I wanted to um, have this discussion. I appreciate uh, Chris providing this platform for people like me to speak on issues like this. Um, we're kind of in this global period of reckoning right now as far as you know anti-blackness being just endemic to um at the very least endemic to american culture so um the reason why i wanted to talk about maryland death fest is a product both of casual observation and also personal experience um So just to get uh, to set the to set the tone here, I want to talk about um, Baltimore and Maryland, but specifically Baltimore because that's where Death Fest takes place, right? So some of the most gross statistics are the fact that um, ninety five percent of individuals stopped and searched by police were African American, despite the population here being uh, much different. Um, African Americans are, are represented much differently in the population here. Granted, Baltimore has a much higher population of African Americans than a lot of other places in the country due to it being kind of you know urban, but it's still there's still not 95% black people here. Put it that way. Um, there's been videos of the police here planning drugs on people. Um, the Department of Justice did their own research into the matter and discovered lots of different uh, abuses that police officers committed against the citizens here. 72% um, of the inmates in the Maryland prison system are black. Um, Maryland has the highest rate of black male youth incarceration in the entire country. Um, between 2006 and 2015, 67 people were killed by police in Baltimore. Um... So that's just to, to, to let you understand that um, Maryland, the state, but also specifically Baltimore, is about as anti-black as you can get in terms of, you know, the way that the police interact with citizens, the way that a lot of legislation affects the most vulnerable groups of people in this, in this uh, city and in this state. Um, and... People usually retort to that with the fact that a lot of people in positions of power here in the state or in the city are black. And I always respond to that with um, the idea. I don't know if anyone's ever seen the movie Django Unchained, but I always talk about how, you know, since here is not racist because black people are in charge, you know, the last 30 minutes of Django Unchained can't possibly be racist, right? Because Steven was black. So that means that nothing in that movie was racist, right? It's an absurd, absurd, absurd claim that demonstrates either that the people don't actually understand what systemic racism actually is and how it functions, or these are people that support white supremacy and they're being dishonest. So now that I have that out there, um, let's talk about the history of NSBM and general just sketchy shittiness at Death Fest. Um, I became personally aware of just how prevalent a lot of this stuff is back in, I would say, like 2007, there was another, I was in a band called Reanimator at the time, and uh, I used to hang out a lot with the dudes from, shout out to X Dementia, I used to hang out with them a lot, I used to joke with Brandon about, you know, uh, Brandon's father is Egyptian, and we used to joke, joke about, um, I hope I didn't like put too much information about him out there, but we used to joke about being brown in the scene, basically, and um, we had a discussion about Impaled Nazarene because I loved Impaled Nazarene at the time. And either it had not occurred to me as a result of me just not reading the lyrics or being super deep into interviews and stuff, or I chose to ignore it, which is something important that I'll come back to later. I had not understood that Impaled Nazarene were kind of a white supremacist leaning band as far as their personal politics goes. And um, 
that leads into a conversation about Destroyer 666. I was a Destroyer 666 fan for a long time. I had only really listened to one album, but I thought it was great. It was like uh, Phoenix Rising, something like that. But then discovered their interviews and um, heard uh, the story about Blasphemy, the, the guitar player from Blasphemy beating up the one dude from Destroyer 666 or whatever, and was taken aback by that. And this was all stuff that I knew when I was still in high school. So it was surprising to me to see them announced for Maryland Death Fest. And um, I would say that they are an aberration, but that kind of stuff lets fly all the time. Case in point, um, to kind of dovetail my personal experience with MDF in with um, these things that a casual observer might notice. Last year, I was asked to participate in um, working security for the pre-fest party and a band called Dumal played and um, I had no reason to believe anything immediately was sketchy about them because some of my friends were playing in the other bands that played with them however there was a um, an individual with an Operation Werewolf patch on his vest at the venue and I had to present this to my you know my um security the head of security and we dealt with it and it became this thing that got blown up on brickle vegan i'm sure a lot of you have seen it the backstory to that is uh was that i was the one that who even pointed this guy out in the first place which pushed people to act furthermore maybe like a week later i found out completely by accident in a in a jam space of another band's jam space i was uh jamming with some other people um i just happened to see a dumal tape in one of the racks with uh iron crosses on it and that's when i figured out that dumal had released um things on vanguard productions which is historically an nsbm slash national socialist white supremacists promoting type of label so this is not uh old and this is not um should I put it not aberrant you know this is um common and it's recent um which is why I've been I've been kind of digging the whole metalheads against racism thing um it's been really cool to see people uh vocalizing their support uh for people of color as well as seeing uh this wave of like people not willing to tolerate that kind of stuff in the scene anymore but a lot of it is, um, I don't want to name drop anyone specifically uh, because I res really respect this person. I really respect his music. But um, there's one person specifically that I saw participating in the Metalheads Against Racism thing. He did this whole video clip or whatever. But maybe like a year ago, kind of around the Dumal situation, he had released a blog talking about how the way that we make this stuff go away is to just ignore it. Like, if NSBM is there, just don't buy it. You know what I mean? Like, And that was bizarre to me and kind of disheartening as a, as a lifelong fan of this person almost. But um, that sentiment was common um, when I was dealing my own personal issues with the Wolves of Inland here, with the Operation Werewolf stuff. I was initially warned about them before I even knew anything about them. Someone had confronted me to tell me that hey, this member of your band is potentially a neo-Nazi. And um, that's kind of difficult to wrestle with. And, of course, uh, our first move was to ask him, and naturally he lied about it. But but that's the, the thing I really want to get at, or I, is that I want to really get across, is that the liberalism is fascism's best friend. Um, it's certainly all well and good to have this idea that these people are in the fringe. There's not that many of them. They're just doing their thing off on the sidelines. And as long as they don't bother us, we don't have to bother them. That was my mindset for a long period of time. But what people fail to realize is that while these people are off on the sidelines, they're marshalling, they're building their, um, their armies, so to say, and they're voting, most importantly. Those are the people that um, the government most caters to. Those are the people that the government was set up for. Um, so naturally, the only solution would be direct action. If you see someone wearing an op werewolf patch or whatever, say something. If not to them, say something to someone who will say something to them. Um, 
do, don't participate in shows with people who have sketchy members and obviously don't contribute any money and don't go to any NSBM shows. Um, hold Death Fest to account. Seriously. I haven't seen Death Fest put out any statements. Like, they haven't done the bare minimum that a lot of these multinational corporations have been doing, which is just like a black JPEG with white text on it saying Black Lives Matter. And the reason for that is obvious. If, if Death Fest did that, their their fan base, their ticket sales would split immediately. We all know this, and we all need to know the reason for this. But um, yeah, um, that's all I really wanted to get out there. I, I didn't really have a whole lot else to contribute um, as far as my personal projects go. Um, I'm in a band called Embalming Process. We've been kind of taking a break for a while, but I would really like to start up doing stuff again after we come out of this global pandemic type thing that we're involved in um that's a gore grind band i also do a edm noise or excuse me a edm like dance project uh techno music project like uh i guess you could call it synth wave um that's called nightmare difficulty um i have a twitch channel that i i usually play games on but i also like to have lots of political discussions especially for people who want to know more uh about like the black struggle but specifically about the insidiousness and um the just the way that white supremacy is woven into the fabric of our society as we know it um i'm always up for having those kinds of conversations on stream um i'm never judgmental i always try to approach the conversations in good faith so you'll never have to be afraid of somebody screaming at you calling you a racist that this that and a third on there but, um, yeah, that's all I really had to say. Um, I appreciate this whole Black Lives Matter stuff, and it's really, really nice. But um, please, 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 please hold your promoters, hold your bandmates and members, um, and hold your organizers to account for this kind of stuff. Because, um, like I said before, it's easy to just ignore it and to pretend like just ignoring it is what's going to make it go away. But the only way to actually make it go away is to confront it head on and call it out when you see it and fight it when you can. So uh, thanks for watching. Thanks to Chris for providing this platform. And um, yeah, see you guys in the pit.